Everybody's good. It's like you just sold it. It's like you just sold it. You know, I'd like to call this meeting of the Monticello City Council to order. Please rise and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing as Rodney Burris leads us in prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you, Father, for again bringing us together. We ask you to be with us as we make budget decisions today we, as we talk about stuff and help us to recognize where things need to be spent and where things don't need to be. We pray, praise you and glorify your holy name. Amen. 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 Roll call, please, Jeff. Mr. Reed. Here. Mr. Woodham. Here. Mr. Carey. Here. Ms. Lively. Here. Mr. Piercy. Here. Mr. Brock. Here. Mr. Broderick. Here. Mr. Kim. Here. Mr. Burris. Here. Ms. Yu. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Public participation, in-person participation. This is an opportunity for the public to provide public comment to the presiding officer. Those wishing to speak are required to sign in prior to commencement of the meeting and must address counsel from the seat and table provided. The public comments must comply with ordinance 2014-02 and be limited to five minutes or less. Anyone up? Thank you. Remote participation. This is an opportunity for the public to provide public comment to the presiding officer. The public comments must comply with ordinance 2014-02 and be limited to five minutes or less. At this time, members of the public are able to attend public meetings by web conference and to submit public comment by email, voicemail, or through web conference. Anyone tonight, Maura? Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, approval of documents and action items as listed. Claims report, claims dated October 29, 2024 through November 12, 2024. Meeting minutes, City Council meeting minutes, October 28th, 2024. City Council closed meeting minutes, October 28th, 2024. Treasurer's re Treasurer's report, February 29th, 2024, August 31, 2024, and September 30th, 2024. Permit report, October 2024. Fire report, October 2024. Police report, October 2024. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Is there a second? Okay. Any comments or questions before we vote? Of city staff? Hearing or seeing none, may have a roll call, please. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Brock? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. And Ms. Yes, motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to the mayor's report. Candidates running in the consolidated general election can file petitions November 12th through November 18th. Upcoming events. The Monticello Rail Railway Museum's Polar Express event starts this Friday and runs the next four weekends in downtown. Downtown Monticello shops are hosting an ugly sweater shopping night from 5 to 8 p.m. on Thursday, November the 21st. The Villas of Hollybrook is holding a Christmas market on Saturday, November 23rd. And tickets for the Monticello Main Street fundraiser, the, Raids of, the Reds of Christmas, are on sale. This event will be held Friday, November 29th in downtown Monticello. Additionally, Monticello High School will be presenting a 50th reunion of the Madrigal Dinner Concert this Sunday in the Seabrook Center at 3 o'clock p.m. It's free, open to the public, and they're anticipating more than 120 alums or people coming back to sing, plus the uh, this year's Madrigal Group. Uh, I think it, you'll enjoy it if you'd like to attend. It should take, it should, the, the person that's in charge said an hour, but knowing vocalists, it'll be longer than an hour slightly. Okay, so that's for your information. Moving on to new business. Ordinance 2024-51, an ordinance approving an encroachment permit at 219 West Washington, City of Monticello, Piatt County, Illinois. Jim. Thanks, Mayor and Council. Yes, um, so just a, a quick uh, overview of what this is. Encroachment permits required in our, in our code of ordinances for anything that's gonna be put in the right of way. So I'll get right into the, the specifics. The city of Monticello received an application from Bucks Pond Properties 
Mr. James Helmuth is here to discuss any questions you may have for him for a permit to allow the installation of a patio cover, a patio cover structure on the city, on city property at 219 West Washington to cover the outdoor seating area. The structure will be anchored to the concrete, but not the building. If approved, the structure would be constructed in general accordance with the plans submitted. I believe you all have seen those and uh, I provided a, a vicinity map as well so you could kind of tell that, that that patio that we're speaking of is really patio dedicated to that property and the uh, upstairs um, apartments that they also own. So sections 94.075 through 94.079 of the city code allow issuance of a revocable encroachment permit for certain privately owned structures on city property after city council has reviewed the request and passed an ordinance allowing such structure, which will then amend the uh, list of allowable encroachments we have within the city in the um, section there of 94.079. Because 219 Washington Street property is contributing structure to the Courthouse Square National Historic District, the Historic Preservation Committee must review and provide input to prevent uh, installation modifications that are complementary, not detrimental to the historic district. On November 5th, 2024, at 4 p.m., the Historic Preservation Committee did meet and ha held a special meeting to discuss the project as submitted. The HPC requested a small change to some diagonal cross members and the applicant agreed and will omit them from the drawings going forward. The, the city staff reviewed the application. The Historic Preservation Commission has recommended the structure is satisfactory and in prescribed form as outlined within sections 94.075 through 94.079 of the code ordinances city of Monticello. It's recommended that the city council discuss and approve deny ordinance 2024-51 as presented today. Thank you. Any questions of Jim? Mr. Helmut, it's here. Thanks for coming. HPC was completely okay with this? Well, they had one small change to there were some cross members that lined up with the vertical members of the railing. They thought it would look better if those weren't there. Was there a vote on this? Okay. Yes. Uh, how, it was unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 2024-51, an ordinance approving an encroachment permit at 219 West Washington, City of Monticello, Piatt County, Illinois? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Once more chance, any comments, questions? Hearing or seeing them, they have a roll call, please. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Burris? Yes. And Ms. Yoon? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to resolution 2024-52, truth and taxation law resolution. Terry? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, state statutes establish procedures and requirements for determining the amounts of money necessary to be raised from a property tax levy by a municipality. In accordance with the truth and taxation law, the city council must approve the tax levy at least 20 days prior to adoption of the final levy. If the estimated property tax levy is less than 105% of the prior year levy, the city does not have to advertise its intent and hold public hearing on the levy. City administration has estimated the FY 2025 property tax levy to be $923,631, which is approximately 4.9% over the previous year's levy. The FY 2025 tax, tax levy ordinance uh, will be placed on the December 9th, 2024 city council agenda for approval, a draft of that uh, proposed um, ordinance is attached um, your review um, it is recommended the city council discuss establish the tax levy amount and approve resolution 2024-52 we have as long as i can remember have always done 4.9 percent um, that does not mean your property tax goes up 4.9 percent if we had a million dollars in property tax last year, we asked for 4.9% more. That's it, 100, 
1,049,000. And that's spread out over the existing homes and all the new homes that are not currently on the tax rolls for 2024, but will be for 2025. So it, your property tax does not go up 4.9%. That rate does not go up. Any comments, questions? So why does the city always put 4.9%? Why, why couldn't it be, I mean, why did it be less than that? It could be less than that, but our legal counsel and Mora knows this like the back brain. It's always advised, go 4.9%. You're leaving money on the table if you don't. It's not like we don't spend every nickel of it. That's true. I mean, 49,000, I don't know if that'll pay. It, it's just, in the, you know, a $5 million budget. I, but you do grab, the biggest reason you grab the homes that will be on the tax roll in next year. <clears throat> Anyone else? Is there a motion to approve resolution 2024-52 truth and taxation law resolution? To move. Is there a second? Second. Any other comments or questions? Uh, hearing or seeing any, may I have a roll call? Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Woodham? Yes. Mr. Carey? Yes. Ms. Lively? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Mr. Broderick? Yes. Mr. Coon? No. Mr. Burris? Yes. And Ms. Yim? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. We're moving on to fiscal year 2025 budget discussion only. Carey? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so tonight I've asked all uh, the department heads to join us tonight. With us is Jim Gabarzik, Planning and Development Director, uh, Carlos McClellan, the uh, Parks and Recreation Director, Brett Baker, Public Works Director, Moore Metcalf, Human Resources and Finance Director, Nancy Frazee, the billing clerk, and I believe uh, Callie Jo McFarland, uh, the Community and Economic Development Director, is joining remotely. She's at a conference out in Omaha right now. You there, Callie? She was tech traffic. She said she was gonna walk in as soon as she could. <laughs> She's somewhere between here and Omaha. <laughs> and uh, also joining us remotely, I believe, is Mindy Condis, the Aquatics and Programming Director. You there, Mindy? I am here. Okay, thank you. So, uh, and also, um, I apologize for leaving these guys out, but um, Police Chief Rob Bross and Fire Chief John Rupke. So, without their input, without their assistance, um, the budget would be a very difficult task for, for me to do. So I do appreciate all of your input. I appreciate, uh, we did, uh, Maura and I did meet with the committees. Uh, a lot of great discussion, a lot of great conversation. I, I thank you for spending time out of your schedules to meet with Maura and I. Um, it is greatly appreciated. I think it makes budget a little bit here as, as we get into tonight. I share a lot of information with those committees. Um, and I, we were pretty adamant about the numbers. We were waiting on numbers still, like Freedom Park and, and Overheim Park. And where are we going to be at the Burke Park? Uh, rolling over those, those figures. So as I indicated, I do have those numbers now. So those, I think we were pretty adamant that that's a working document and uh, change um, from what you, we discussed in, in detail to what you'll see tonight. So um, if you don't mind, I'd like to point out one of the items in the consent agenda that you approved tonight and the treasurer's report. There's two line items in there uh, that are pretty significant. 
line item one on page one is general fund balance. Which, of which report? Uh, which report? By September. September. Treasurer's report. Oh, thank you. Uh, so you'll see on the first line, the general fund balance is 16.5 million. When we met, we had information a few months ago and it was about almost 11 million. Um, since then, we have found the treasurer was not including the 4.75 million in the bonds in his <laughs> data. So that is why it's not the 11 million, it's actually 16.5 million. And then the second number, if you go down to uh, underneath motor fuel tax, you go to working cash, um, that is almost $1 million, it's $980,000. That is an account that is restricted and takes council action to <coughs> utilize that money. And it was set aside uh, 2008, I think more indicated as the, the really, really, really rainy day fund, a million bucks. I think it was, what do you say? It was set aside then at 400,000. So we haven't touched it and it's just, interest obviously so you add those two together and it's you know we have approximately uh, with council approval and action 17.5 million in reserves does that make anybody have any questions on that okay um i'm gonna this year I did, with with the projects and waiting on some engineers cost estimates and whatnot i would like to if, if you don't mind i'd like to just pass over uh, general fund and do that after we go through water sewer motor fuel tax if business district so if you don't mind if you we can jump to page 13. <clears throat> That will begin waterworks. <clears throat> um, there's really not, and if you don't mind, I, I, I've highlighted a few lines, line items in here that I definitely want to uh, bring to your attention and discuss. So I'm not going to go line by line. Um, we did that at the committee, but um, if you don't mind, if, if you would allow me to just hit, you know, some of the more major things, if you will. Um, nothing on, on page 13 um, jumps out as far as what was budgeted in 24, what we're looking at in 25. And please understand when Maura and I go through this, and Maura um, can't thank you enough for all your help with the budget yet again. Um, when we go through this, we look at historical data back to 2015. We look at what was approved by council. We look at the final numbers for the fiscal year. Um, so the historical data and trends uh, and the needs of each department kind of go into each one of these departmental budgets. So on, thir on page 13, there was nothing that really jumped out um, to me as, as a huge increase or decrease. Um, and please don't hesitate to ask, that's why these folks are here. They're a huge resource for me and you. If I can't answer it, they can. 
um, page 14. Um, man, I, I wish we printed these smaller. <laughs> um, line 858. Um, you'll see we went from 8,000 maintenance and vehicles equipment went from 8,000 to 12,000. That is for uh, water plants generator work. Um, it's an old generator. It's hard to get parts for it. So um, that is to make some upgrades. I think the motherboard uh, some of the innards of that generator um, bring it up to, you know, 2000 ish. So that's why you'll see that increase on line 858. Um, I don't have anything else that really jumps out on page 14 unless you all have a question. Mm -mm. On 876, residential refuse and recycling, what exactly is that? What does that pay for? Oh, so when we went to a one garbage hauler system, we collect the money, okay? It goes out with your water bill. We collect the money. You'll see it in, as a revenue. And then we pay, it's an expenditure, we pay Republic services and that's paid out of water and good question anything else on page 14 um, page 15 uh, line 900 this is capital improvements for the water department um, we would need to clean the clean the north tower and this ground storage tank that's inside the fence of the water treatment plant so that increased from 4500 to 14000 uh line 905 the elevated storage tank rehab at next park uh when we when we did that project, uh, there was, they did a lot of work at this water tower here by Next Park, and we signed a maintenance agreement that goes out on uh, several years, and it's $18,000 for this year. So they did the work on it, and we have a maintenance program that they come and check everything out, make sure that, you know, nothing you know, if, if there's a pinhole in that thing, if, if, if they see anything, then it's brought to our attention. So that's why that's not 62,000, it's 18,000. Um, so all in all, the line 916 uh, waterworks is actually a little bit down in expenditures from last year. Any questions on 15 or waterworks in general? Okay. Um, line 16. Uh, I would say line 954. This is sanitation fund, maintenance, equipment, and vehicles. Um, went from 10,000 to 40,000. Our back truck needs some necessary repairs to it. That back truck um, goes out way too often with- Most days. Most days. <laughs> um, that back truck uh, is an instrumental part in just sewer work, um, but it's also, literally how we excavate in a lot of situations. They, they will literally go hydro excavate earth to get to a water main break, um, whatever it is. So it's, it's an instrumental part to the sewer and water. So um, 
it needs some some a little TLC. Uh, um, all of these I, I failed to mention at the water waterworks, but I will here at sanitation. All salaries in all the departments reflect a five, three. You said three. It, no, I didn't get a it. note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, three. Get out of this one. <laughs> a five percent minus two percent <laughs> pay increase. I got out of it. Um, so um, that's reflected on the salaries for all full time employees. Any questions on page 16? Okay, page 17, still under sanitation, line 978, uh, lab equipment, um, Matt Utley and, and Nick and Jake um, are at that plant uh, every day and they, they would like, need some new lab equipment for the daily tests and monthly tests and annual tests that is required by the IEPA. Um, line 983, uh, SCADA upgrade. Um, the SCADA system is kind of the brains um, you know, of, of the computer system that helps the wastewater treatment plant operator run the plant. So the SCADA system provides him instrumental data on um, a, a flow of this and uh, chemicals uh, that need to be fed because they're low. Um, it really reads the whole plant and assists with wastewater treatment plant operator and his daily activities. Brad, is that? It is, yeah, it is, uh, for lack of a better term, an automation to the plant. It's what helps us uh, uh, automate the plant where it runs pumps and, and different features, treatment features of it, um, independently of somebody like going in, which is internal valves and stuff. Um, and this will allow us, we don't currently have the delete to do anything off site. So when uh, if we have a storm event or something like that, our operators cannot look at the look look and make sure that something's going on with the plan. You know, right or wrong or whatever, they have to physically go to the plan. Um, so this will give us the opportunity also to, if we have a storm event, a power out or something, to alert some on the phone right away, then me, any of the any of the other under operators, that something's gone wrong there, you can pull something up, you can move, restart a pump, you can restart a pump from your phone. You don't have to, need to physically go there and, and see it because you can't if you, you know with a power out, you can't have like a failure of communication between uh, an old antiquated like auto dialer or something like that to alert you that you have a problem there. So this helps keep in compliance if we have something like a storm event that causes us to go, you know, down the power or something. Thank you. It provides a lot. Wasn't a lot this, this available when we constructed the plant and we didn't, we just didn't take, take the option? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's been several years, I know, right? I, I don't know. I think it was available, but we cut certain things out. Yeah, of, in order to make, I, I believe at that time, in order to make certain monetary things work with that plant, we had to cut out this or that. And I think this function was kind of one that was cut out and it's it's been enough years now, we have to do a little bit more of a major upgrade to it. Right. And then maybe if we had done it initially. I, th I think it's, it's just, I think it's necessary. But. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a technology thing. It's just those systems that we initially installed and that was done, they're just moving to new systems. I got you. It's, no. just, it's, it's like any other filming technology. Oh, I think it's great. I have no problem with it. I just. It makes sense to keep everything in immediate balance instead of having a negative flow, if you want to say. 
Exactly. And having someone have to be there and do that, and if you guys can fix it yeah, from off-site, then... Yeah, and we currently have that uh, option on our water pipe, and it's real nice. Yeah. See something, they can start pump if they need to. Yep. If they happen to be a half hour away or something like that, if they need to. I mean, it's it, it's really, it's a pretty integral part of... Beneficial. Those two, especially, those two um, integral parts of our um, infrastructure job. Yeah. I agree. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Um, so uh, everything said and done with sanitation on line ten twenty. They're um, they're in the black. Seventy six thousand dollars. Anything else on sanitation? Okay, uh, motor fuel tax, uh, a lot of the same numbers uh, as far as revenue. I will point out uh, line 1074 interest. Uh, we've been doing really well with interest. Um, we've actually, so it's increased to 50,000 um, through August of this year. We, our uh, interest was 48 thousand dollars so as you'll those that have been through this budgeting often uh, we you'll hear it over and over and over we're pretty conservative on the revenue so I think fifty thousand dollars is still um, should be expected for 25 uh, line 1078 oil and chip program we'd like to do a few more streets um, next year, so that's increased by 50,000 to 125,000. <clears> um, 10, line 1085, the Route 47 bridge project. Um, we have not started that demo or access as of yet. You recall, can't do, it's time uh, seasonal sensitive, if you will, with bats and mud puppies and mussels so uh won't be done in one calendar year one fiscal year so we just project a million dollars and hopefully we get that started that sounds like a broken record <laughs> really yeah um, so that's that's motor fuel tax you'll see on that treasurer's report um we have motor fuel tax reserves uh, 4.6 million. So we've always said we try to stay above, stay at least 4 million in, in reserves. So um, we're doing pretty well there on motor fuel tax. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, page 19, um, kind of just get to the TIF district information. Uh, line 1114. Um, we anticipate a 20% increase uh, with everything uh, going on in that tax district. Um, most of it is Kirby stuff. Um, so that uh, is 20% 20, 20 increase. Um, line 1130, the water tower bond payment, um, that will stay on the books through 2029. So that's going to be expiring here in the not so distant future. Uh, line 1134, the infrastructure improvements of a million dollars this year. That was for the through our no roadway that's done. So nothing is is represented obviously in 2025. And 1130 line 1137 <clears throat> is the Burke Freedom Park debt service. Um, of 170,000, that debt service comes out of three accounts, TIF district, business district, and general fund. So you'll see $170,000 on there or some figure um, through, it'll be paid off in 2030. Any questions on TIF?
Just FYI, the TIF reserves is about 1.5 million in the September treasurer's report. So uh, this would be in the red, 58,000 and change. Subway lot's gonna be done this next year. Subway lot. I see, I see money there, so I'm gonna assume. That's a good, <laughs> good observation, Mayor Stoner. Is, is this the year? Um, one, uh, that's a good observation. A line 1133 subway parking lot, 170,000. Thank you. I can't believe I missed that. I, people ask me, that's the only reason I, I am. I know, I know. Um, business district, um, we're anticipating expecting uh, 500,000 in revenues instead of 550,000. Um, the Burke line 1186 Burke Freedom Park bond expenditure, 700,000. We did not spend that money this year. It will be spent next year, $700,000. And then the debt service, like I mentioned earlier, $170,000. Uh, again, th from business district, much like TIF, that'll be paid off in 2030. And then we would like to get a down line 1188, downtown wireless project, trying to improve wireless connectivity. It's not good downtown. Um, so you'll see $50,000 and get some wireless downtown. Is Callie you joining us yet? She's probably eating steak. She's in home. Line um, Carry line 1185. We just decided to not pursue that. Um, I'm not telling you needs pursued. I'm just saying. Yeah, it didn't show. So. No, that's a good question. So, in the subway parking lot project this year. We will install conduit in anticipation to put an EV charging station in the future. Okay. Thank you. No, that was a good question. Anything else, Business District? Okay. Um, so, start off the uh, general fund, uh, the um, line four, property tax, um, that represents that 4.9% increase and $246,000 that was part of that $750,000 bond non-referendum that we did to pay for, to help pay for um, Grant and Buchanan. So that $246,000 remained on the property tax, if you recall. Um, number line seven, income tax see a pretty significant increase in that. I We looked through through September of this year, uh, we were at income tax of 779,000. So uh, we feel pretty comfortable with increasing that to 900,000. Um, line 11, the corporate personal property replacement tax, um, we've projected 1.5 million. The state estimates um, their 2025, which if you recall, goes July 2024 to June 2025. So it's somewhat difficult when there's, we're, we're dealing with six months in ours and six months in theirs. Uh, they estimate 1.8 million. So we're kind of coming in at 1.5 million. 
try to be on the safe side. Um, that's really the only significance I saw in the tax revenue section. In miscellaneous revenue, um, line 35, interest, again, we increased that from 20,000 to 40,000. Um, it was 64,000 through September. So again, pretty conservative on that interest. Um, uh, line 49, you'll see a revenue of 60,500. Fire department um, was successful in obtaining a grant. So when we get to capital improvements, you'll see a 60,500 um, as part of a capital improvement project expenditure down on the capital improvement projects. So Chief Rupke is going to um, hopefully get get a bondable project set up to to spend that money. It's been allocated. We'll, we will receive it in 2025. That's all I have on um page one unless somebody has any questions okay <laughs> um, administration expenditures uh again departments all show reflect a three percent increase in salaries um line 82 You'll see an increase on Livingston Center maintenance 6, 000, from 6,000 to 30,000. Um, that is to replace all the windows uh, to make them uh, a lot more efficient um, here in, at the Livingston Center. That's all I had on page two. Page three, uh, line 111, tourism. Um, we always contribute to the tourism, uh, which is, I think, under the umbrella of the, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's usually, uh, you know, last year was 30,000. Um, this year we increased it to 40,000. They are uh, pursuing a matching grant. So that would be uh, the our 50%, if you will, their 50% of that grant, if they were to get it. Um, line 132 under equi equipment replacement, uh, we would like to get a new truck for uh, what we use uh, for construction, stakeout, surveying. It's, it's a big box bed truck that um, we've got a, a, a rollout on it so we can get hubs and lath and uh, survey equipment out of the truck and, and go out in the field and use it. So you'll see that on 35,000 for 2025. Uh, total at line 144, total administration expenditures um, almost the same as 2024. Any questions on page three? Um, Page four, police department. Um, line 188, um, <clears throat> payroll taxes, pension. Um, that reflects another uh, $250,000 additional payment into the police pension. We've done that four or five years now in a row. Um, 
that pension, if you all recall, was down in 30, 30-ish percent funded. I think now we're mid 70s, 74% funded. That is huge. That uh, Mayor Stoner uh, uh, was pretty adamant champion um, with the additional CPPRT we were witnessing really made a valiant effort to get the police pension fund funded. So um, we'd like to do another 250,000 and maybe we can end up mid 80% funded. And that's huge for any municipality, uh, large, small, you name it. A lot of them operate down near that 30-ish percent funded. Um, line 199, the police range, um, we, we would like to add uh, an outbuilding out there that officers use uh, on a fairly regular basis. They'd like to put some gutters on it and air conditioning in it uh, so that they can be out there obviously in June, July, August and all their gear on and everything and kind of cool off. So. Um, that is the police range um, increase from 2,500 to 5,000. Um, line 203, publications, printing, uh, pretty good increase from 6,500 to 11,000. Um, Chief Bross, I, I think this, the only word that comes to mind is kind of the community policing is um, getting out, getting publications, getting coloring books, uh, hitting the streets, getting to know the kids, so on and so forth. So um, I think that would be money well spent. So um, not much change really on, on page four other than what I mentioned, unless somebody's got a question. Yeah, so where are we on staff? Are we, are we about the same? <laughs> That's not a huge increase in salary. <clears throat> Thank Correct. You. So, so keep in mind our, our staffing is at eight, B plus seven. Okay. Um, we have put that in the budget for two years, but we've never, you know, by the time we get close, we lose one. So okay. uh, we are testing this Friday. It looks like we already have, we have, <laughs> our seventh is in the academy now. He graduates December 19th. Uh, we have room for one and it looks like we may luck out. I don't want to put the cards in the horse, but right. I have a good feeling we're going to have our eighth relatively quickly. That would put you full. We would be at full. And, and, th and this uh, number is reflective of, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> um, any, any other questions? It's a good question. Okay. Uh, page five. Continues with the police department. Line 232 Academy continuing education. Um, increase that a little bit for Lexapol. That uh, is our policies and procedures. Uh, they update them darn near monthly, uh, with, especially with the Safety Act. Uh, the Training and Standards Board puts out a lot of new uh, policies, procedures, and that keeps us updated. And we also have daily training bulletins uh, that the officers are required to take on a monthly basis. Uh, that way they know the policy, we know the policy, and they have acknowledged that policy. We didn't always have that. Yeah. Um, line 238, squad car laptops. Um, I think that will outfit all the squads with laptops. Correct. The, the plan. So these are the same ones that the sheriff's office uh, are, are starting to phase in because they're in the same boat we are. Our laptops are getting to the end of their uh, lifespan. Uh, and what the hope is we would also get docking stations that go into the police department. So we are no longer buying desktops. They can bring their laptop out of the squad car into the office, type reports, do accidents, whatever they need to do. So it does cut down from the desktops that we will have because they'll have the docks in there. 
multi-use. Correct. And we cannot get the docking stations anymore. We, we did. We got <coughs> with, they're getting old and we cannot get the docking yeah. stations. We've been, to Rob's credit, we've been looking them along the last couple of years trying to make sure that uh, that they work in the squad cars at least themselves. So Instead of doubling up, easy to plug and play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, line 241, squad car replacement, um, 64,000. That includes uh, equipping them with all the necessary accessories that go on them. I think, Rob, you have with this replacement, you, you're you only, you've got one left in the fleet that will need to be replaced at some point. At some point, yes. I don't think we would have to do that exactly in FY 2026. Yeah. But, um, because it, keep in mind, uh, last year we purchased three because our fleet was aging, uh, starting to cost more and more. Money <laughs> worth, uh, one of our vehicles was ten thousand dollars and wasn't worth half that. Um, so this would get us to even par work most of our fleet as. No more than roughly sixty thousand miles. Yeah. Um, line two forty eight. The body cameras. Um, you know, we bought. We spent. I'm going to assume about fifty grand this year. Um, so we got a thousand bucks in there for just maintenance, repair, whatever might be needed for those. So um, all in all. Um, Police department expenditures, um, not much, much up from current year. Any any other questions for me or Rob? Okay. Uh, fire department, page six. Um, uh, utilities telephone line three one one. Um, that's a a little bit of an increase, and I think Chief Rupke is that for cell service on the laptops we have on the trucks. Yep, yep. yep. Um, so there's that increase. Um, I always like to point out when when payments are coming uh, up to expire that won't be on the books at some point in the near future. Line 323, rescue pumper truck. Um, 75,000 and change. Last payment, I believe, is next year. Um, so all in all, with the and, and the fire department has another expenditure under capital improvements. So I'll get to that when we get to that page. Um, that, like I mentioned earlier, they got that grant for 70, 60,700 or something. Um, so total fire department uh, uh, is less, a little bit under what we had this year. Any questions for, for Chief Rupke or I? Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, page seven, public works. Um, Line 375, uh, increased beautification uh, from 20,000 to 25,000. I think for Rebecca Niemerg um, does an outstanding, fabulous job on the beautification program. Um, that program is the only thing we get a compliment on. <laughs> it is a true asset to our community. Yeah. For sure. um, Everybody loves it. Nancy, have you had a phone call on utility billing clerk giving you a compliment? No. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> um, I get them on the screen all the time. Okay. They okay. stop they, they stop me telling okay. um, so um, increase that a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps do some tree replacement downtown. Um plant search. I don't I don't have um, anything else that 
much different than this year and the next year on page seven, unless there's a question for Brett Baker or I. Okay, um, page eight, um, public works continued um, under equipment replacement program, line 417, other equipment. Um, you'll see a pretty large increase from 16,165,500. Um, that is for, um, we literally use something similar to a manure spreader at the green waste facility to spread the leaves and grass. It is absolutely necessary. We can't burn the leaves and grass in the air burner because they're completely saturated and they don't burn, they, they, no. they put the fire out mm -hmm. when you put them in the burner. So we spread them across the landfill cap uh, currently, um, and then it also, there's two other purchases in that, uh, a mini wheel loader, um, Public Works has requested that for a few years now. Um, what that will do is eliminate the use of a backhoe when we do uh, the brush pickup the first Tuesday of every month. It's much smaller, compact, piece of equipment, much easier to get in and out of uh, the roadway and yards. And you can see more what you're picking up than you can in a backhoe. Pull and tuck, won't tear up the ground. It'll make that a lot easier. Whereas in a backhoe, you you can only feel it. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 tough. It, it is tough. That that's the intent. <laughs> um, so we'll. Uh, I think the the plan is to trade in the the paddle wheel scraper on that. That's a huge piece of equipment that um, served us well when we excavated for the detention basin enlargement at the middle school served us well when we stripped topsoil out of Overheim Park. Um, it, it served some, some cart structure uh, repair work. Uh, we haven't used it in over a decade. Yeah. Pretty close to it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, another purchase would be a mini excavator. Uh, our current excavator would be traded in uh, for uh, a much needed upgraded mini excavator. So that is uh, the three uh, elements, of the other equipment of 165,500. Um, one of the things that'll be coming up, line 418, the dump truck, that's gonna be paid off in 2026. Uh, the air burner line 419 will also be paid off in 2026. Uh, everything said and done, public works expenditures, um, not much of an increase um, from 2024 to 2025. Do we have much more efficient lighting since the electricity budget went down half? That electricity street uh, 407. Yeah, 407. That's a good, good question, Mike. Most that was for the install oh, okay. of street lights along Old Route 47 Lodge Park area. Okay. It says electricity, so I think they used any other questions. Okay, um, page nine, um, aquatic center, um, line 470 salaries increased, um, I don't know, a, a little bit. Uh, most of that is due to the number of 
lifeguards that are required and minimum wage goes up uh, another dollar in 2025 to $15 an hour. At the end? That, as, that was the plan, uh, step increases of a dollar through 2025. Okay. Um, so line 504 aquatic center expenditures, um, about the same for, um, 2025. Mindy, do you want to add anything to that? I thought you put her down. Sorry, no, I was trying to unmute it. Um, no, everything looks good there on my part and your part. Okay. Um, page 10, um, Recreation Department, line 536, participants fee JFL, uh, increased a little bit. There seems to be an increase in participation uh, with JFL um, that will only increase when this year's varsity sages bring us another state championship, Ryan? That's the hope. Okay. No pressure. That's the intent. We're counting on you, Ryan. Yeah. We're gonna give it every chance, every, everything we got. Um, Line 544, uh, a little bit of an increase in salaries. Again, that's minimum wage. Cause and effect. Um, I don't have much change on the rest of page 10 for recreation. Uh, one of the meetings trying to do a drainage project out at the, uh, the ball diamonds. At the Forest Preserve Park? Yeah. yeah. You had mentioned, is there any way we could... Yeah. Um, and I had said, you need a place to discharge it. Right. And where would that be? Um, I have not asked the Force Preserve if they would allow that. Okay. I have no idea. I have a gut feeling based upon recent conversations with the Force Preserve. I don't think they would have much interest in tearing up a forest preserve with tiles. What are the other options there? Is there a different surface to put, it, put something underneath it? All right. Okay. Are you, are you trying not to have rain out? So yes. Yeah. I don't know, okay. Mike. Okay. When you asked about eliminating the rain outs, the only thing would be under drains and then you got to take outlet them into that camp not camp creek mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay well you said you were looking into that and i was not on this so uh, no it's not included in next year's budget all right <clears throat> any, any other questions on page 10 <clears throat> Page 11, uh, wrapping up recreation um, only line that, that has any much difference would be line 596 football um, added $1,500, I believe. Most of that is probably helmets. Equipment, getting equipment recertified and just as Ryan can tell you, it's super expensive for football. Yeah. So um, everything's said and done, total recreation expenditures up a little bit from FY24. Any questions on page 11? <coughs> Okay, so continuing with kind of how I started off with showing you what's in reserves and the budget was a working document 
during the committee meetings, <clears throat> and I would get you figures for some of these capital improvements um, that I did not have available at that time. I, I said I would have them and present them to you tonight. So what I thought would be the best way to do that is um, on page 12 is capital improvements and the overall general fund expenditures. It'll be a black number, it'll be a red number of whatever. So I gave you two page 12s, 12A and 12B. Um, so let me, 12A, the differences between 12A, 12A we're doing, proposed to do Freedom Park and nothing on Oberheim. 12B is the reverse of that. Postpone Freedom Park and pull the trigger on Oberheim Park. So, um, uh, line 707, um, expenditure of $246 for Grant Buchanan, um, that will be on there, um, paid off in 2026. That is that additional non-referendum tax, property tax of $246 in, this is the $246,000 out. Um, line 708, alternate 4A access, I have not, um, that has not been completed. Uh, I would ask that we leave that in for 2025. And hopefully I can come up with, get that resolved next year. Um, <clears throat> line 710, Main Street, Independent Street, William Street. Um, that has been um, kind of a pressing thing with uh, a few on this council. So. Um, we actually adjusted the appropriation ordinance and put $80,000 in there to do the preliminary engineering this year so that we can bid that out as early next year as possible to make sure, ensure that has to be done before school starts. Um, Grant and Buchanan went into the school uh, after the school began. You can't do that with this one. Um, so that's 1150000 That's reflected in 12A and 12B. <clears throat> um, line 714, the bike trail west, that's the 1.2 miles from Green Apple Lane <clears throat> out towards Cisco. Um, we propose doing about $38,000 in rock. We'll go in there, Public Works Department, um, will clear the rail bed of saplings and trees and brush and whatever. And then uh, we'll bring in, haul in some rock. And then we have uh, a, a pretty good cooperative uh, arrangement with the township, Monticello Township. So uh, they have a grader, Alan Sprinkles, top notch grader operator. Um, other segments, he's come in and used his grader to grade this CA6 rock off, <clears throat> spread it out, and then we can pave it in a future fiscal year. Um, you'll see line 725, um, Robert C. Burke Memorial Park. In 24, I combined Robert C. Burke Park and Freedom Park of six million if you recall, um, and that included four million in bonds and two million out of reserves. That was how that was set up. Um, so this year, because of 
a couple of options that is presented to you tonight, it was best to go ahead and separate those. So um, you'll see nothing under uh, Overheim Park and you'll see line 725, um, $2,178,251 for Burke Park. That is what's left on that project for construction engineering and construction. We will get at least, we'll probably get two instances <laughs> from the engineers and from the contractor yet this year. So that number will not be 2,168,000. I don't know what it's gonna end up being, but if they don't submit an invoice, then it, that's what it's gonna be. But they're gonna wanna get paid. Mm -hmm. um, line 726, that is the latest and greatest revised Freedom Park cost estimate and engineering, 1.9 million. Line 727, <clears throat> um, debt service for Burke Freedom Park, uh, there was, this is the third fund I, I mentioned earlier, $100,000 from gaming, and that's through 2030 again. Um, under buildings, that line 735, that is um, 115,500. That includes the 60,700 uh, of the grant, and then 55,000 just for what, what would be necessary repair work and small upgrades to the current footprint of the fire station. Um, try to get some uh, air conditioning in there. These guys go to a, a fire and it's July 15, it's, it's a little warm. Um, yeah. Meetings in the training room, uh, they they do a great, great job of training um, and have, have since John's been there. Um, so 115,500 is 55,000 repair work, um, concrete work on the, on the bays, uh, and then that grant of 60,700. Uh, line 736, the public works loan payment, that last payment is in 2028. So we will have, <clears throat> like I mentioned, there are three or four line items that are will be coming, uh, will be expiring either next year or 2028. So please understand those, that will be money available. It, it's not millions of dollars, but it's going to be coming off the expenditure book. So, um, the bottom line, line 801, uh, let me start the approved budget for this year, 24. Uh, we were in the red, two and a half million. We are not going to be in the red at all this year um, because Burke Park's not finished. Freedom Park did not get constructed, so we should not be in the red at all. We'll be end up in the black this year. Um, the long and short of this, doing Freedom Park and nothing on Overheim, we, this general fund budget would be in the red 6.1 million. Any, any questions on, maybe a better question, any concerns on that? And I, how much do we have in reserves? 16 and a half million plus another million. Okay. Um, our, our an, an, an annual operations and maintenance budget for the year, for the city of Monticello is about, I think it's less than 5 million. 
Oh. So we have three years. Yep. There's we have three years. Yeah. That's, what I was just, that's what I said. Oh. I said that usually it's like six months. A lot of municipalities feel fortunate if they have half a year's in reserve. Okay. You want to talk about 12B and yeah, please do. 12B. Um, the short of it, nothing on Freedom Park and $8 million on Oberheim. Oh. Is that what we're looking at right there? Is that $8 million right now? So thank you. Um, you the rendering of the uh, revised site. So I got the cost estimate Friday morning, had a Zoom call Friday afternoon and Monday, um, and another phone call this morning with the engineering firm. So this plan has no bells or whistles to it, none. It has four youth soccer fields. Um, north is to your right. Apple tree obviously is at the bottom of the page. The library shows up there. Um, so four soccer fields, and this is to meet the needs of the recreation department. We went and then C up in that same quadrant is one multi-use field, not two. There is no synthetic turf. There's no artificial turf. It is all natural turf. Um, it has uh, kind of going south from that, those fields. <laughs> There's the detention basin that's required. I will say part of the stormwater management, um, those smallest soccer fields labeled B, in certain heavier rain events, they will be underwater. So water is gonna back up and then water is gonna drain out. Um, we feel if we have to move because of rainwater. We can play in the outfield of the baseball softball, or we can move and, and stripe the multi-use field. We can, we can go out there and paint small soccer fields on it. Um, but we can make accommodations during those certain rain events. Muhammad has soccer fields in the floodplain if you ever you know drive drive down there. So um, you know, some concessions are being made. There is no bells or whistles to this. Um, continuing kind of down, uh, there's two baseball softball fields, not four. You'll see in the, the red shaded is future phases. So there's room to build two more baseball softball fields if, when necessary. Um, there's one uh, entrance, one way to get in this vehicular, one vehicular access, that's from Route 47. You come kind of due south off 47, you're flanked by some parking lots, and that is it. There's no there's minimal curb and gutter. It's going to be an asphalt road with some small roadside ditches. You do curb and gutter, you got to do storm sewers, storm structures. That's all eliminated uh, for the vast part. Um, there, were, there is a multi-use path, um, you, if you can see it, that leads from 
the the bike and hike trail extension into this park and all the way to there's a concession building in the middle of kind of the four baseball softball fields there's a concession stand um, next to that C multi-use field concession stand press box storage um, there there is no access from Green Apple Lane there is no vehicular access through Orchard Lane there is um, you can barely see it it's H um, by Orchard Lane that is an eight foot multi-use path that folks in apple tree can pedestrians could access the site without going all the way out to 47. Um, we had we heard some concern from apple tree. Um, i'm not going to say how legitimate the concern was but it was vocalized this this awful light pollution coming from the field. Well, there are no fields next to Apple Tree subdivision. We heard a little bit of an outcry on all the increased traffic. It's going to go through Apple Tree. Phase one, there's no vehicular traffic. So we have we have a pretty vast buffer from the recreational fields and the residential subdivision. There is, there's no trees or planting, there's no playground, there's no pickleball, there's no tennis, there's no basketball, there's no terrace building with indoor activities. There's no elevated multi-use open space that uh, we were looking at. There's no shelters. This is, a bare bones minimum design. Then it's a no. Oh. <clears throat> I would yeah. ask to do, reduce the scale and do it in phases, what the direction I was given. Oh, what's that price point? Well, the original price point is. We don't, we don't even know million what. million dollars at one time. It was. We don't even have an original price point, so. Right. I appreciate all the work. Yeah. Into this. Well, the, the biggest point is that I wanted to bring up, and going back to the original thing that we talked about in the beginning, have they done any fundraising? No. Right. And and they, it won't happen. It then, won't happen. No. It will not happen. Then let's invest what we already have into the parks that we have. And instead of creating a new one. We don't have. We don't have, we don't have to invest in that's the thing. We we don't have what we need. We don't have the fields that it's, other places. Can we, can we think about the actual need? Because what we're talking about, while I appreciate sport, I'm not trying. I don't want to beat anybody up. But this is not a need. This is not a need for a city. This is. I love the recreation, but I'm telling. But I don't believe this is an actual need. And to to the to be more direct. If this is what it needs to happen and it, this is not enough, then this needs to go to a referendum for the fundraising for to get the, the uh, get the bond to do what they, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't come through the first time, we need to recognize that's people saying we don't think this is important. I think that's where we're coming to. I know we spent 20 plus years on this thing and I. I recognize the work and I appreciate the work, but I'm, the reality is I don't know that people actually want this. There was more interest in this thing than any other thing in the 10 or 15 years that I've been around and coming to these meetings in this thing here than everything else combined. The garbage. Okay. And I hear what you're saying. I don't see it. Just, I'm just, telling you. I understand. I, we had the biggest, this place was packed. When we had a meeting. And that's fantastic, but there's no dollars. There is an interest here. There is no dollars. And it fits in with our now. 
It's I still we have at eight million dollars for just this. I don't we that's twelve million dollars in the negative if I'm on, just for this year, if that's what I'm looking at. Yep. I'll let them explain it better. Please explain that. That would be wonderful. But it does fit the strategic plan. We did we did a strategic plan. This was a in terms of what the community said this was the need. The community said more parks. It's like called out as Oberheim Park is a long term goal in the strategic plan. Okay, well then again, dollars. This is a start. You know, you've got to start sometime. This is gonna work forever and ever and ever. No. It's still upgraded, you can still add to it. Well, Terry, you said this eight million is for the whole of it and you want it to do it in phases. So this would is, it be this is this is this, this is an eight first? million dollar uh -huh. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, this is for what's not shaded okay. in red. It's for the bare bones. So maybe Carlos can talk about there. There is a this can be a revenue stream, so that it would help offset some of this cost in the future. So there are some things, events we can have here that would, and also bring uh, people into the community. Um, it helps offset what this cost is. Well, yeah, I, I know I'm not supposed to pine from the, from the chair, but I've lived here, you know, 50 some years. It used to be we we worked it well with the school district in sharing facilities. As time has gone on, the facility usage has dwindled. It's almost nothing. In, now, am I correct, Carlos? Yes, and like for this year, I mean, we used to have five or six soccer fields down there. We do not use the turf other than for right. practices in the area. That we what I'm saying, what I'm saying is recreation department, to my knowledge, owns, we own or the, by the land dump, by the landfill, we own, uh, what do we got? T uh, P T -ball. Peanut? Usually up there. T-ball. Forest That's all with it. those fields, and we've actually met with Forest Preserve or talked with them about putting new lights in out there this year. And they're not interested, I'm sure. They're not interested. They would be, but there's a lot of their stuff. It would cost us a lot, a lot more money. So I think it also tell us at any time too, that because there's no written agreement on the use of those fields. So I, I, I really think that this is th these are necessary. I do think they're important to the community. Because we have a lot of young people who make take advantage of our recreation program, and it would be nice to have a place that's stable where people can participate. The way it is now, it's poor. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you, we have people playing in D-Land. Our Monticello teams are playing in D-Land. They're playing in Cisco. They're playing in White Heat. Yeah. They're going elsewhere because we don't have facilities. Well, and I, I heard so I heard a comment from someone the other day, because uh, White Heat's putting in a second field. And someone said, if I won the lottery today, I would I would give it to White Heat, because at least they're doing something. That's right. He said, that he said, Monticello is sitting back and talking and not doing a darn thing. At least White Heat is trying to do something. So I would, I would reward them for their efforts. And I, I think there's something else that we're failing to see. And I, I, Eric is talking about where's the money and where's the fundraising. With the, we've worn ourselves out trying to come up with something. Am I, am I telling the truth? We've worked on this. How much, I have, how much money have we spent trying to get something put together? Well, I mean, and if the community is not that interested in fundraising, what are you going to do? Nothing because the community, the, they won't come up with big bucks. You can't, well, can't think that way. We're talking about a baseball field here. One of the things, so I hate to be too cliche here and use the line, if you build it, they will come. But if you put this in place and people see the, the, see the, the, the design and stuff, you have a better chance of funding some of those other phases with people saying, you know, we've got two ball fields there or whatever. And now we can go to people and say, hey, look at what we're doing here. We'd like to put another field over there. We would like for you to help us. You have a better chance than taking people out into the middle of a field with nothing around yeah. and saying, envision what we've got. Now you can say, hey, here's what we've got. Here's how we want to make it better. Uh -huh. 
I, I, you know, I, I think there's different opinions on if it's needed or not. Um, but I, I can tell you, Carlos and I have worked on some addressing the needs, not the wants, addressing the needs of the recreation department, the city of Monticello's recreation department. <clears throat> and we, Mike Coon chaired a committee and, and they presented um, say some, a lot of wants and that led to that cost estimate that we all had sticker shock on. And it, so, and the school district, you know, they put in synthetic turf and some touted it as it's, it's for the community. But Carlos can tell you better than I, there are restrictions to those fields. There are the competitive leagues and the rec leagues all needing, they didn't increase the number of fields they have down there. They, they didn't. So there's competitive leagues and recreational leagues of the same age groups, plural, vying at that, that specific location all every night, it, weather permit. They did not increase the number of fields. They wanted to charge everybody $250 per game to play on those fields. Schools did. And, and so, so Tim and Mike, that's your... That's how you're saying, I mean, that's what you're saying. We're going we're gonna to raise money the same way by having this. We're going to charge people to come out here to this. So, we, I mean, we, and that what you, I mean, you're saying, you're saying this could be a revenue booster, yes? Uh, Isn't that what you said? We host tournaments. So, yeah, but again, you're hosting tournaments, you're charging people to play, yes? Absolutely. I mean, yes. So I mean, we, for example, we played in um, Morton, yeah. my daughter's team this summer, and there was an entry fee to play, and it was hosted by the the, the Morton Tourist Association. They they invested money up front to get people there. It was a three day or a two day tournament, two or three day tournament that's going to bring people into town. The way these tournaments are designed, they're Saturday Sunday tournaments. You get people from up to two hours away. People like to stay in the Best Western. People like to stay here or whatever. I'm not saying that, that I, I don't think that to say that it's a revenue builder. I don't think that we're not going to we're not going to try to. It's not going to pay for itself. It's not going to pay for itself yeah. at all. It's not. This is addressing a need within our community. Um, and if we make any anything back, great. But if we don't, we're spending the money to invest in in. in and our kids and the activities. And, and I mean, I think you look at the, the trend of youth sports and where they're going, you know, it, I, I don't think any of us would be opposed to, we want our kids to play as many sports and be involved in as many activities and stay active and do all this stuff. And, and, and they do a great job of providing opportunities for our kids with what little space they can find to have them run around. And you're, you're limiting, what you can do with what we've got, you know. Not to say that Force Preserve is going to go away. We we could add five softball, baseball fields to this community and they'd be full. I mean, as a, as a coach who's coaching travel softball right now and trying to schedule places to play games, they, they, we'd, we'd fill as many fields as you put in this town. Uh, so what you're going to see is by adding this, you're going to add other things opportunities uh you could bring adult league back which we've lost to ivesdale you know or, or wherever it went off to uh we can add you know other opportunities by having more facilities and more offerings is an investment in monticello to do something like this and and compared to where you know this is not bells and whistles this is need we, we we don't have, we have no fields. We don't, we have um, great fields, virtually nothing that the city is offering. And we don't have access to any of the fields the schools have. In fact, we have less access than we've ever had at, you know, because the school has built the things. And one thing I will say is 
getting to this travel ball situation, I've visited many local towns. And, and the, the parents who say, you know, like, we're in Meridian playing on nicer fields than what Monticello has. We're in Dalton City. Dalton City playing on nicer fields. I mean, we're, we're talking towns minuscule to the size of Monticello and their facilities trump ours. I mean, so I hear that I hear your concerns. Talk to us about how the, how the twelve million dollars negative uh, negative budget is going to work. How's that going to work? How, as as I'm looking at your twelve B, that's twelve million two hundred thirty two hundred thirteen thousand four hundred ninety one dollars in bed, right? So was there a plan? Because we didn't let you talk about the money part of this. So we. This year, we were going to dip into reserves two million, right? Yes, sir. So this would be, if council wants to go this route, 12B, I would not do, I would not, let me just say, I would do Overheim Park and Freedom Park. And now you're talking 14, 15 in, in the red. So you would literally, I, I would be literally Council would approve spending reserves twelve million dollars. We would over sixteen sixteen and a half. Seventeen. And a half. Seventeen and a half at your disposal. It would go down to four or five million dollars. Which is still so what, so what we're equating this to, just so I'm clear. So what we're equating this to is then we're gonna take four to five three years or two years of budget of the three years of budget reserve we have to spend to make that right, to make that. Is that what I'm understanding? I, I believe that's correct. We would be- I mean, we said earlier uh, the budget for the city is about six, five to $6 million a year, a year. We said that the 16 million we had laid aside was about three years. I'm just, what we said in here tonight is all I'm, is all I'm going off of. So we're gonna trade two years of budget safety for this. So, yes, we're spending a lot of money out of reserves. There's no arguing that. No, I'm not arguing. I just want to clarify that's what we're talking about. So we will be left with approximately one year operations and maintenance. We still get, I mean, 2026, we'll still get CPPRT, the tax revenue, the gaming revenues, um, that for the most part, it's a balanced budget for from previous years. We budget in the red sometimes, but it usually, not always, usually the revenues in are more than the expenditures out. Agreed. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we've we done nine, if, if we do the main independence, w William Street, that will be $9 million spent on roads since 2016. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've not neglected the roads. Yeah. Um, and, and we need to, to address those. And we have, you guys have addressed those. Um, we will have at approximately one annual, one fiscal year in reserve. Revenues and expenditures usually are okay. Where were, where were, where were we in reserves five years ago? When I was appointed city administrator, we were $6 million in reserves. We made that 10 million. And then we have an opportunity to take what we've saved over the just five years is going to have long-term benefit. We're investing, taking that money and we're investing it in something that the city has asked for. Years. And I would add this, when, when was over, when was this park conceived? When was the idea that we need this? 20 years ago? No, 2020 20 plus. 20 plus. That, that ground idea. What, what, we need 20 plus years. I mean, that's. Well, I would argue this. Over the past 20 years, we've amassed enough money in our general fund to make this project work. 
Yeah. We've been spinning our wheels for 20 years. And over the course of that 20 years, we've been fiscally responsible and, and, and have grown that money to the point that we can now say we can do it rather than say, well, that's a lot of money. I'd still like to keep that money in the bank. At the end of the day, our job is to be fiscally responsible, make sure we have money for, for safety, but it's not to amass as much money as we can without investing it back into the community. There's no reason to set on three years of operating when no, six months no. of operating is considered good. Th that is just hoarding the money saying that we're not going to invest it back into the community. We're just going to keep this money growing and growing and growing. Here's our opportunity, right? Here. And here's our opportunity to say for. we've saved this money over this time that we've been talking about this project. We've got this here. We're going to go make this project and we're still going to be setting over that six month operating cost of emergency fund by double. Sarah, you said that our budget for, for last year was two million dollars, two and a half million dollars in the red, and we wound up, we're gonna wind up in the black. So there's two and a half million dollars right there that we would have spent just on this year. That we put back. We put it, yeah, we, ha we have. So the fact that we have been really, we've been, we've been lean on budgets because I've insisted on that since I've been mayor. Am I telling the truth, Terry? I crab all the time about. You're not the only one. I know you're not the only one. But we have been conscientious about how we spend money. I think it could be a good, you know, we, we've been very fortunate. Yeah. And the school has CPPRT, but um, Larry, with your, you know, you, you were adamant and pretty adamant this year, if I recall correctly put $250,000 in the police pension. So we've taken that from 30 some percent to mid 70s percent. In four years, um, again, we've done doing the road that's proposed for 25, nine, over $9 million in roads since 2016. <clears throat> And, and the wastewater treatment plant. The plant. And, yeah. and the yeah, bike and hike trails. Yeah, we've had a lot of major upgrades. That's what we do. Yeah, the streetscape. Well, more than happened ten, the, the years before I became mayor. That's nine years, and we were before that. Where they continue to kick the can down the road, but they don't spend any money ever. We've spent money and we've saved. I think we've done our due diligence. I would just interject a number that is not quite accurate is the end of uh, 2018, they had just over two million dollars in general on our reserve. So we don't need to do the stuff that's going on. This is 2018. Yeah, we've done well. That that's even better. So you, you can interject that. I won't have you too heavily. We have somewhat of about four somewhat major things coming off the books here in the next two or three years too. Um, yeah, there's there was the truck, the tower payment, the burner, the dump truck, they're not huge ticket items, but, um, and, and you know, they're, we're still gonna, a dump truck is probably in the near future, um, but, you know, done, getting reserves down to that four or $5 million, um, you know, we're not gonna be able to do a $1.5 million road. I mean, to, to, we're not going to be able to do that like we have since 2016. But man, I don't know if we have many roads left to do. Um, 
over the course of six years, we've grown the reserve fifteen million. I'm not saying we're going to do that in the next six years, but we're going to wipe it out in one year. Right. We're not going to wipe it out. Do you know that? I'm just doing. I'm just looking at what we're looking at. How do I know that it's twelve million dollars and it's possibly fourteen million dollars? We'll do the, both parks. So we're going. I mean, I understand one year is great. I get it, but I'm like, let's pump the brake a little bit, just a little look, just for a minute. But, but and I understand what, huh? At least pump the brakes. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I'm just. I'm just there's, I mean, there'll be a vote, and they'll, it'll go one way or the other. I get it. I mean, Terry, you said this is like the no frills, basic, right? Lowest you can go, you know, right. plan, right? There's like, I, I don't think, I don't know if we can need more time to look for another option because it seems like this. I don't, is it. I don't think there's another option out there. I think next option. I think that if anything, they've done all the due diligence and found everything they can find. I, I'll give, I mean, I'll give you that all day long. That's a lot of tails off on this. And th if you say, if he says this is base bump, this is basic, this is basic. This is the least we can do. There's a lot of no's. So let me, I, I thought I heard somebody say, we're not voting on this tonight. No. So I, I, but, I, but I recognize at some point we're going to vote on this. Yes. Part. But I thought I heard somebody ask, we're not. It's, this is discussion only. Hopefully some direction from the council. I'm going to come back with 12A or 12B. Um, to your point, Elaine, the engineer sent me a cost estimate Friday morning. That estimate for this was $11 million. And I said, so then we had a Zoom meeting Friday afternoon. And I said, no, 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 and started cutting. They had, you know, the press box was a really nice press box, concession area. Um, you start picking up, the engineers have to give me the worst case scenario. Here's a contractor price for installing silt fence. It's $15,000 just for one, one line item. Well, if I can go to Menards and get, get the same silt fence and our public works guys can do it for $1,500. So I start cutting and cutting and cutting. And then the engineers thought about it all weekend, obviously, because we had another phone call this morning. So the engineers and I feel comfortable that we can do the construction and engineering for 8 million. And, and maybe by the time we get into full blown construction plans and bid documents, maybe it's a little, um, it won't be a lot less than eight million, but I think there are still things that we might be able to to cut here and there. And I and please know, you you all approve the budget, and obviously the appropriation ordinance, and the bid documents go out. You guys have, if the bids come over, that comes to council. You have you will have are the authority to reject any and all bids. If the bids come in under budget, I would hope the the consensus, not you know, the majority of the council would okay, this is what we want to do. We're in it to win it and approve it. But if, if the bids come in at 10 million, uh, you can reject any and all bids. Very similar to how we operated with Freedom Park this year. We approved Freedom Park. Bids came in high, we said no go, and it came off the books. Well, it never, it, it never even went to bid, but the cost estimate kept increasing. Cost estimate came in higher, and we said, and we, all right, let's no. Yep. Same thing would happen here. If we say, okay, we're in on this, and they come back and they're like, ah, it's going to be 12 million. We go, man, wait, wait, wait. So we approved the 6 million, which was Freedom and Burke Park. What, what's the what's Burke Park going to wind up? 2.168. We will have two, a little over 2 million to pay next year. 
I know, but what what will that what will Burke Park the total? Because we we approved the six million. But the six million was for two parks. Correct. That's what I'm four, asking. Four, four million was for Burke. Four million for Burke and two million for the other one, roughly, right? So yeah. So we've got two million so far that we've saved by not doing Freedom Park. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying do Freedom Park as well. Yeah. No. 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 That's twelve A. I'm sorry. No. At one point, you did say your best, I, your favorite thing to do would be to do both parks at the same time at 14 minutes. I apologize, but I, I thought I said I would not propose okay. doing Oberheim and Freedom. I, 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 I would postpone, if the council as a majority wants to do Oberheim, I would postpone Freedom Park. And ultimately, when we talk about going in 12 million. I get it. The big picture is 12 million. We're looking at 8 million for O'Brien Park, mm -hmm. which would be half of our reserves. Or roughly 2 million for Freedom Park, which would be an eighth of our reserves. Actually, no, that's already paid. That's already taken care of. That's a, that doesn't come out of the reserves. That doesn't come out of reserves? The Freedom would not. No. That's already part of that bond. Gotcha. No, freedom was no, it depends on how you right yeah, because it's showing on here that yes, that's no, I'm sorry, I'm just okay. Bond, two million, four million bonds. Can I ask a question? My understanding, we borrowed how much? Four point seven five million. Four point seven five million. Are we bound to spend money on Freedom Park or on the park, or can we use whatever we don't use for one or the other for something else? Good question. Uh, no, we are not bound. We are not bound to spend that on. So it's open ended. The language in the bond states it's open ended. Okay. I, so I, I think that's what I understood. I just wanted to make sure that my understanding was correct. Yes. I looked that up when the council decided to pull the plug on freedom. Yeah. I reached out to uh, Tim King, our consultant, and he verified. Money could be spent. Terry, this is Callie. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I will say, since you have obligated TIF funds to pay for said bond, and Oberheim Park is not in the TIF district, I do not think that is legal. That's where I'm at. Yeah, Maura and I talked about that today. There's another kink. Yep. <laughs> Terry, you uh, I've stayed quiet through all this and I'm going to stay quiet for a while longer I'm still thinking but you're the steward and have been for a long time you know, you and I have had a lot of discussions are you personally comfortable with taking your operating budget your cushion to run the city down to that number that from from you, we've pretty well had carte blanche to do what we wanted, but if we spend this money and your operating budget goes, your cushion goes down to six months, you've got, you got six months of money, operating capital to work with. Are you personally comfortable with that? Do you, you think that's a wise move? I would have one year, one year. One year. in reserves. I would be comfortable doing Oberheim and not an additional two million for freedom, because that would be that would be too too much out of reserves. I feel you know we have grown reserves successfully over many years, and every year it's increased. So I I think that would continue, right? And I said, we won't be able to do a one and a half, two million dollar road project. I mean, capital improvements, capital improvements will decrease drastically when we don't have the reserves. Okay, thank you. But I, you know, I remind, as everybody knows, we're all gonna have a vote one of these days. When it comes down, all of us have a vote. So think about it, study it, think about it, think about where you want to go, what you want to do. You know, uh, I know some of us have kids in school, some of us don't have 
I got a grandson, but I'm, I'm looking at, at both sides, trying to look at both sides of the coin for long-term and, and short-term. The Freedom Park thing is a wonderful thing. Just had Veterans Day, how can you deny it? You know, it is what it is, but, and this is a big but, it adds nothing to the overall structure of the city. The Oberheim Park thing adds a lot. It's a ton of money, but it adds a tremendous amount to the future of what's gonna happen. The, the Freedom Park thing, we might be able to come back and do it in a couple of years or three years or whatever, but as far as benefit to the city, not so much. Benefits the guys that, that served and gave their lives and did all that, I'm not taking an ounce away from that. But overall, probably Oberheim in the long run is gonna, as Ryan's talked about, probably overhaul, it's gonna do better for us in the long run. We lack a lot, and everybody knows, we lack a lot of support. That's what always has bugged me about Oberheim. And I'm gonna stop because I'm, I'm so boxed here and I don't want to. Um, we, lack, we lack the support facility. That's what's always bugged me about Oberheim is that we don't have a place for people to stay. We don't have a place for people to eat. Right. We don't have a facility that sells any type of equipment in town. You can't buy a baseball bat in Monticello. Exactly. Nothing. And I don't see that anybody's proposing to say, hey, if you build that, I'll open a sporting goods store here. I don't think that's gonna happen, you know? So as far as bringing other people in, some, but they're more than likely gonna look at some place they could stay, some place they could eat, some place they could support their team, Da, 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 and we don't have that, and we're not going to have it. No. it I, it's not going to happen. So think think about, you know, I think about those things, and I've thought about them for four or five years now, you know. Uh, I, I just don't, I'm not sure where we could go with that. So I, that's all I'm going to say about it. But I, if you're okay, if you're comfortable, would be comfortable with that operating budget. Well, and I, so, you know, we've got to, you know, that money. <laughs> Kind of put me on the spot, but I'm not, not, and I'm not trying to. Who would you do it? So uh, I just remembered what Maura said and made me feel a little bit better. <laughs> we were two million in reserve. Our O and M may not have been quite five million then. Maybe it was, I think it was four and a half million, and we had two million in reserve, and and we did okay. You would hope to continue to be able to add some to that every year again, right? Yeah. And I think this yeah. is how this is how budgets go. This is how we operate. <clears throat> Want something nice? We save our money. We're responsible. We put money away. We hold it back. And then one day we can afford that nice thing. We're at the point where we can afford the nice thing. Right. And the, but I mean, going back to the point Wendy was saying is that, yes, let's go ahead and we have the money to go ahead and do this part of the park. However, who are we going to attract to come to it? Because they're going to have to drive to Champaign. They're going to have to drive to Cater. They're going to have to go to Bloomington to stay somewhere. No, no, no. I don't think it's, 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 the kid it is, it's a community thing. Right. And the, the effort else is extra. Yeah. The kids already play at Forest Preserve. We have no rights to that land. We have no, and the, the, what Mike brought up, can we get the, can we make the fields better? I, I don't want, I don't want to improve something that could be yanked out from under our feet at any minute if they decide to. I don't want to make somebody else's property better in hopes that I can use that. I would rather take the money that I would have spent to make that property better and spend it to make my property that I own, my facilities better. And and so the idea is we're not, you know, we got on the topic of how is this a revenue stream? I, I, I go away from that. How does this fill the needs of our community as it sits? We have sports teams in this community sharing two ball diamonds that are well maintained, inadequate for what we need. This gives us an opportunity to 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 cater to those people so that our our teams in Monticello aren't driving to Whiteheath to play softball or baseball, aren't driving to Cisco or D-Land and going to surrounding communities to play. 
our Monticello teams have to, we're outsourcing our own youth softball and baseball teams. We're sending them to other communities to, to play and when we could have them here. So I, I think that we, when, we, when we talk about, is it gonna attract people? It may attract people, it, it might. I think you could, you could host a two day tournament and use it as a tourist thing. We, we could do that. But at the end of the day, if we don't make a dime off of this, this is an investment in our kids in the youth programs and, and it's an investment in our community. As people are thinking about living in Monticello or any community, safety, schools, amenities, and we, in a lot of ways, we lack the amenities that people are looking for. And so we've, we've done well. People like to live here. It's a great place. We've got excellent schools. But at some point, we are competing with people that want that other communities that have things and they'll make a decision potentially not to live here. And then that affects tax base and it affects a lot of things we all enjoy. So even if we don't personally benefit from the fields, we will, I think, get the reward in ways. And there is silence. Thank you. Would you like some direction? You're asking for tonight on this, or opinions? Uh, you got opinions, in direction? Well, uh, I mean, I jotted down some, you know, 12B and 12A. I, don't, I know I haven't heard from everybody, but. I, it has to come back to us, right? Huh? One of them has to come back to us. Yeah. And you need direction on which one of those to bring back to us, correct? So essentially, we're not taking a vote. No, but not. you need to know which one you should come back with. Yep. So in that sense, I think you should come back with B, if that makes if that makes your job easier. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. It does make my job easier. B. We don't have the Pike County Journal has not been in any of our meetings for a long time. But I mean, I think when things get printed and the community finds out about it, that's kind of where you find direction. Will we get, will, will it be a ground well of support or will people look at it and they're like, oh, I, I, I think it'll be just like everything else, Mike. It, there'll be a groundswell from about 30 people on, on the hater page. Yeah. And the rest of the community, you won't hear anything because they're happy. They're happy people do that. That's right. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't think the paper makes that much difference. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think Terry needs direction. Can someone else give him some direction? I, to throw just one action item out there, I know you said you had several phone calls and were able to shave $3 million in just a few phone calls, but just, I don't know if this rendering reflects those phone calls, but, I, and I'm not qualified to speak to it, but there's, there's a lot of parking here. I, I don't know, it, it appears actually all the parking, I don't see where there'd be more parking going in in the design in the future area. I don't know if that's, and I do understand the scope's been narrowed several times, but there's nearly 300, 300 parking spots here. It, is there any opportunity your team and the design team can, can shave more dollar signs off of this? Uh, I don't know. And I know we, hey, we're not working with a lot of time either, so. Uh, yeah. But, you know, parking, 300, 281 yep. is a lot, and it's not enough. Gotcha. So, and, and the worst, the worst is when two games are ending and two games are starting. Oh, I, I can imagine, yeah. You need, you need 600. Um, parking is, um, you never have enough parking. Well, and what we don't want to have happen, the overflow that is into the apple tree neighborhood. And uh, we don't want that. Oh, yeah, that would, that, be, that would be a that would be a nightmare. And I, he lines in the other hands, but I mean, I I, I don't want to talk without <laughs> specific knowledge, but I, I do feel like when you're looking at expenses, paving is or you know concrete is is one of the cheaper. Or we're not doing it's not doing concrete on this on this phase. This he said asphalt is what asphalt. Yeah, that's going to be a cheaper. It just. 
but when you, you know, to cut one off is not going to save you a ton of money, I don't believe. Right. You know, that's, I mean, that's not where you're going to save a bunch of money. So. In terms of direction, I think you should try to plan for B, because that's not going to cut you off later on. Like if we, if you just plan for A and then later, you know, don't want the overheim or whatever, then you, you wouldn't be stuck. So in terms of direction, my advice would be go for the biggest one to plan. Others, in his direction, I say B. Keep yourself open, you know, to We're, uh, opportunity. Not increasing taxes. Um, we've, we have the money to do it. It's something the community is asked for in, in the strategic plan. This was very high in the strategic plan. So if we, if that's what they, if the community asked for it, we have the money to do it and we don't do it, then we're not being very good stewards of what the community has asked for. So I say B. And this is just planning. We're not yeah. breaking ground. We're not right. getting yeah. bids or, you know, this is just in terms of. Putting a budget together. Yeah. Putting a document together. Uh, yeah, it, the council, you know, at the next meeting can make a motion, however you feel necessary. But I, if we're, if, if the council approves 12B, it will be bid and it will be bid as soon as possible and hopefully be constructed in its entirety in 2025. Some direction, there's a lot of voices that haven't been heard. I'm great. I, I've said thinking it after 8 30, I so I don't have any thoughts. <laughs> you say I'm sorry. No comment. It stops this. working after 8 30, so we're on the. Uh, that, that's the way life is on the city council occasion. <laughs> What'd you say? Sorry, that's the way life is on the city council occasion. No, I mean, I, I'm open to both, so. I'm going to lean more toward B after hearing and being a part of this community, seeing what we have and what we don't have, this would be huge for Monticello. I think you've got a majority. Uh, I think I do. Yeah, you do. One, two, three. Five. Five. That's not a majority. B. B. <laughs> the mayor would, would side with B. There you go. But I, I don't have a vote. <clears throat> I don't have, I, I, you know, when it comes down to it, I don't have a vote unless it's a tie. Who hasn't spoken? I'm for B if that's, if that's not. Thank you. Voice. Anyone else? Have, have, you know, have an idea, have to say something. I've said enough. Did you pick, did you give him any direction? I don't have an option right now. Okay. A or B, I think was the... A or B is... I don't care to choose right now. Okay. You have enough I, I have enough, but I'll come with B and if, if the council... I don't, I don't understand why we can't have, have an opinion about something to give someone direction. Okay, let's move on. I suppose, I suspect we're done, right? You've been through everything. Yeah, unless anybody else has a question. I have about it. And thank you for all the work and time company staffs put into this. I know it was countless, countless hours, and I appreciate it. I had, I had a lot of help. So, thank you so much for your efforts, Terry and Mark, and Mayor, and everybody that you know crabbed about this work. Let's have all the persons' reports. How about Rodney? Said enough tonight. <laughs> Tom, nothing, sir. Mm. Third round of the playoffs Saturday. 
show up at <laughs> one, two o'clock. When we go, one, two o'clock. We're going deeper than we've gone for a while. So they're having they're they having a cookout or something. So it'd be a great one. I would imagine they'll well they'll tailgate free and then somebody will do sandwiches at the ballpark. Gotcha. So if you have children, grandchildren, whatever, um, watch Allerton Park is going to do their Christmas thing, and there will be a fabulous representation from. <laughs> What was that going to be? Sign up, sign up and uh, bring your children out. We'll have a good time. Thank you all. No, I do not have any. Um, the last blood drive was October 22nd. I don't know when the next one is, but there's always a need to donate. There's one at the high school when it's coming up. And, is it? And I just signed some for us. Oh, I, I think they do one. They do one in, in each semester. There, there was one. I get the emails from the Red Cross, but the the other one is it's like the twenty third or something like that. I think uh, November. November. Oh, okay. No, December. Oh, December. Oh, December. I, think I think it's right before. Yeah, it's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Give your last drop of so, blood. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, you got anything tonight? Oh, no. Brian, through the night. No, oh, sir. Okay. Police chief's report, Rob. If someone has something, I'm not going to come here any longer than we have to. You're so kind. Andrea appreciates that. <laughs> Fire chief's report, John. Um, we had a couple of good trainings last month. We did a good training, which is what I mentioned. Uh, uh, there, there's a down firefighter, a victim. Uh, we go in there with a special pack and everything, get them out. Uh, we did cardiac training with the uh, Lara from Carl. Um, it, it was a really excellent training. Uh, we did open house preparation. We had an open house on the 12th. Uh, it was well attended. Um, I didn't get to go because my daughter got married that day, so I really had another oh, opportunity. Congrats. But, uh, I had to be in. So, uh, but it was it was well attended. So I appreciate that. Uh, we ran 57 calls last month. We're up to 522. Um, we ran 499 last year, which was our all time record. So we're Way ahead of our, our all time record. So um, that, that's about it for the fire department. So thank you. Thank you. Here. Terry, you got an administrative report? A lot. <laughs> a lot? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to say some of you may have seen an advertisement for a position at City. City Hall Administrative Assistant, um, Bill Potts, um, has been with the city for 14 years. And Jill has um, decided she's going to pursue other things and, and submitted a letter of resignation effective at the end of this year. Um, I think Jill was maybe going to do it sometime next year, but wants to do some other things. Um, been with the city a long time. I appreciate all that you do, all that you have done, Jill. Um, I wish you nothing but the best in whatever whatever you road you go down next. Um, it, you've been a huge um, asset to City Hall. And thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Congratulations on your change. Yes. <laughs> That's Jim. That's Jim. That's He's our Jim. Are you done? I'm sorry. <laughs> Got anything else? Nancy? Awful quiet over there. Come out to the tailgate party. Starts at 11 over at the new building. Um, new Is it done? Is that, that building done? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have. That was $5 million. I'd entertain a motion. So move. Move. Again. Aye. 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 Aye.